What's up, guys? Um, unfortunately, I wanted to do a live stream tonight, but you need 100 followers to do so, and I don't have that. So, yeah, that kind of makes things a problem. Sorry, just watching the Yankees-Indians uh, game. Um, my pre... Uh, this is kind of like my preview for tomorrow. Um, I'm from Carolina, and I've been a huge Eagles fan all my life. Um, so this game is as important to me as a Dallas game is, because all of my buddies have just been talking smack and just talking nonsense of how we're going to get exposed, we're going to lose, you know, we can't handle their front seven, we can't handle their receivers, etc., etc., etc. Personally, I think that we can take it to them because a couple things. First off, it's a short week. One thing that ran through my mind today is, yeah, everybody's saying they're ready to go, you know, except for Lane Johnson and Darby and somebody else that I can't think of. But on the Panthers' side of things, their two corners didn't practice yesterday. So my thought is they're going to have a walkthrough. Probably, they probably had a walkthrough today. Probably have a small walkthrough tomorrow. So they really haven't had a chance to really run all week. So that could benefit us. Um, also, excuse me, their starting safety, Kirk Coleman, who is an eagle, is out, which is huge. Um, I think for the Panthers, he was a big presence on the field, and it's kind of big that he's not in. Um, and in relation to the injury, uh, Cam Newton had shoulder surgery in the offseason. And I don't think he practiced Tuesday. So, you know, you got to think, after having shoulder surgery in the offseason, having that week to kind of, you know, go to treatment, let your muscles relax, everything, that could prove to be a problem for him. His shoulder might start getting aggravated, or um, it stuff just might start bothering him, and uh, I think that could really work out into our favor, depending on how our front seven plays. That one of the most important things is we have to get to Cam. I've seen, I've watched the Panthers many times. If you can't get to Cam and he gets out of the pocket, he's going to make a play. That's just plain and simple. That's the kind of quarterback he is, and much as I am not a big fan of the Panthers, I'll give credit where it's due. Um, they also have huge receivers. Kelvin and Funches are 6'5", I think 230, which is, I think, I think Douglas is 6'2", and Mills is about 6 feet. Um, so, and from the stats I saw, Douglas actually did better against slower receivers and I don't think Kelvin I don't really consider Kelvin Benjamin on the big side of things because he um he's tall and he did gain a little weight before the offseason yeah you know he's got speed but he's mainly really tall and I think Douglas can go up against him as long as we have McLeod depending on where the play goes shadow either shadowing Funches or shadowing uh, Kelvin. Um, but that's one of the keys. Uh, second key is we need to do what we did against the um, Chargers and Melvin Gordon. We need to shut down Jay Stu, Christian McCaffrey. I'm not too worried about McCaffrey because I haven't seen enough to be worried about it, but I know that uh, Jonathan Stewart can break something in the blink of an eye, as well as we need to watch out for Cam, like I said. All right, we need our front seven to come out swinging. We need to sack him and hit him early and often because if you saw in the Super Bowl or if you saw in really any other game that Cam's played where they lose or Cam gets hit a lot, he starts making errant throws that don't need to be made. And that's where our secondary could come in and start picking balls off. That's where Patrick Robinson could come in. That's where Mills and Douglas and... Jenkins and McLeod because Jenkins had a huge game whenever we played them in 2015 and our secondary was atrocious so just getting a little pressure on him would be huge you know what I mean you know he's not really the only 
mobile quarterback we face so far is I consider Alex Smith a little bit of a mobile quarterback, a little bit, but he's not anywhere near where Cam is. So that's going to be a big test to see what our front seven can do. Uh, I think that's a huge matchup to watch to see how they get to Cam, if they can contain him, what we do in the run game. There's just a lot of factors that I'm very interested to see. Um, on the offensive side of things, uh, not having Lane Johnson is going to hurt big time. Well, no, I'm not going to take that back. I, I take that back. Not having Lane Johnson hurts, of course. But last game, I had no idea Vitae was even in the game. No idea, because I guess he was playing well. They didn't need to mention, oh, Vitae's getting exposed, etc., etc., etc. And uh, there's just so many factors of things that our offensive line needs to do against their studded uh, defensive line. They do have Julius Peppers, who, you know, he's... Yeah, he's decent and everything. Excuse me. Sorry, I gotta crack open a cold one with the boys. Um, he's decent. Don't get me wrong, but Julius Peppers is old. All right, that is not a young guy. We have faced much more difficult defensive ends, and I think Jason Peters, as much as everybody says, I think he's playing absolutely incredible this season. Lights out because I, I, he, him, once again, having Lane Johnson would be huge, but they handled Melvin Gore or uh, Melvin Ingram and Joey Bosa, no problem. I think Carson Wentz last game got sacked once, maybe something like that. Um, but our offensive line has been doing very, very well, and I think this whole, uh, Left left guard rotation needs to stop. We saw the three touchdowns we had early uh, against the Cardinals were because Wisniewski was in the game. So, Doug, let's do that. There is no reason to keep switching stuff around if stuff is working. If the run game is working, the pass game is working like it was, stick to Wisniewski. Okay? Don't even think about putting, say, a model the game at all there's just absolutely no reason for that at all so i just think a balanced offense is going to be huge uh come tomorrow at 8 25 get blunt going i love Corey Kement. i think we need to get him going too get the whole run game going throw blunt up the middle have Corey go outside really kind of Take the pressure off of Wentz to where he can actually, well, that was a game, um, where he can actually run play action like he's so good at and throw passes like he is so good at. And um, I think tomorrow is the breakout game of Alshon Jeffrey. I really do. Like I said earlier, their two corners are banged up. All right. I have not heard very much about their corners because they have a young secondary just as we do. Alshon Jeffrey strives in prime time. And I think this is the game where he goes off. I'm thinking two touchdowns, maybe two touchdowns for like 100 yards, something like that maybe. Excuse me. Um, but yeah, I think, I think just allowing Carson, taking pressure off of Carson because of the play action and kind of establishing a run game is going to be big. And that allows our receivers to get open. And that's what we saw last week. We saw Aguilar catching a touchdown, which I have absolutely loved this season, seeing him bounce back. Cause I was really high on him whenever he, um, Came out of college. Um, Torrey Smith, redemption. Uh, that was big, too, especially that celebration. That was funny to watch. Um, just getting everybody involved. Trey Burton, Zach Ertz. Uh, Zach Ertz is a stud. That is that, that guy is a stud. Me, personally, right now, I think he's a top tight end in the league. Personally, because I, I... I mean, you got Gronk and uh, 
Travis Kelsey up there, but Gronk's always hurt. And uh, Travis Kelsey's inconsistent. Zach Ertz, the past, what are we in, week six? Past five games has been nothing short of a stud. So I think he's going to be very, very important. And I think our receivers are going to have such a great day because of their young secondary also missing one of their starting safeties. And like I said, their corners are probably banged up. All right, so I'm interested to see kind of what uh, what our receivers kind of bring, you know, which receiver shows out tomorrow. Me personally, I would absolutely love for the first play of the game to be like a 75-yard touchdown to Alshon Jeffrey. That would make me literally the happiest person in the bar. Um, but who knows? I Like I said, Alshon Jeffrey, two touchdowns, 100 yards. Um, in relation to the run game, Luke Keekley, once again, as much as I'm not a big fan of the Panthers, I'll give props where it's due. That man is a tank. He is where the ball is any time. Excuse me. He is always where the ball is at any time. It could be down the field and he's down there. Eliminating him or getting him off balance is would be huge because he's essentially the heart and soul of their defense. He really is. But you got to think, you can't play, you know, he can't play every position. So, you know, we're just going to have to kind of see how the offense, offensive line does because he's going to be blitzing. Not a freaking question about it. He's going to be blitzing. So it's going to be interesting to see if we can hold on with him, kind of disguise some things and, uh, you know, just kind of throw their front seven off guard, which I really think that we can. I really do. I think, personally, we're a better team. And don't get me wrong about their other linebacker. Shaq Thompson's on the upcoming, and Thomas D- excuse me, Thomas Davis, even at his age, is a stud. Even at his age, is a stud. So it, our front seven is just going to be very, very interesting. And I am, like, I seriously can't wait to see kind of what we do. Um, sorry. Um, I personally think the most... In- hold on. Hi, honey. Hold on one sec. I'm doing a video. Hold on. Can I call you right back? I'll call you right back. I'm, I'm in, literally in the middle of a video. Sorry. Um, yeah, it's going to be a great game tomorrow. It really is. I have friends and family that are going. So... You know, I think tomorrow is when Philadelphia proves it. They are going to come out and prove it. And, like, I just, teams are going to keep and keep doubting us. And that's fine. I don't, like, I, I prefer personally to be the underdog. Philadelphia always plays better as an underdog. They always historically have, in my opinion. Um, so, yeah, I think we're three-point underdog or something, but of course they're at home. Um, so we're just going to have to kind of see what, uh, what happens if, I, I don't think Cam is going to have a game like he did the past two games for the sole fact that against the Patriots, the Patriots have one of the worst defenses in the league. And the Lions don't have, outside of, I think, Darius Slay on their defense, don't have a front seven, nor do they have a decent second. I'm not going to say ours is good, but it's it works. We have a working secondary. So, it's just, I, I just think we're a better team. I really do. So, I think tomorrow, it's going to be a close game. I know it's going to be a good game. It will not be a blowout. And if it is... I'll, I'll be shocked. Granted, I'll be a happy person, but I'll be shocked. Um, I think final score tomorrow is 27-24. And we, Carson Ren, ugh, excuse me, Carson Wentz has a game-winning drive, and Jake Elliott takes a game-winning field goal. Um, because I couldn't do a live stream, I also wanted to touch on Darby and Sidney Jones. Uh, I saw a video on Twitter today of Darby is actually with them in Charlotte, which I think is awesome. Um, and from what I've seen, he will, he was walking fine. No problem. Looked like he was going, he looked great. So 
I think he will be back week seven against the Skins Monday night. Oh, and I think Fletcher Cox is playing uh, tomorrow, which I think is going to be a huge boost for our secondary. So it's not just Jernigan uh, kind of being the only person. I'm not going <sighs> to. Cox and Jernigan together just screw up quarterbacks. They just make a defensive line split because they take all the pressure. They get all the double teams or the pressure and everything causing our defensive ends to run around. You saw that against Kansas City. You saw how many sacks we had against Kansas City? And uh, that, that was awesome. Uh, so, yeah, I think Darby comes back against the Skins, and I think I think we're supposedly wearing all white tomorrow, which kind of blows, but whatever. I think Darby comes back when we wear all black against the Skins. Um, in relation to the color rush tomorrow, the whites are kind of boring. Not gonna lie, I'm not you know not too pleased about wearing all white, but whatever you know, fine. Wear them. I was also saw a report today. Certain people think that the whites are a decoy. I think that would be awesome if it's a decoy and end up going Kelly green color rush jerseys or all green color rush jerseys. That would be absolutely awesome. Granted, it probably won't happen. Just people speculation, but who knows? Um. Uh, Sydney Jones. My dad went to Washington. So I am very excited for Sydney Jones. Very excited. I saw his tweet a couple weeks ago that said seven with exclamation points and the sirens. My thought, as it has always been since he got drafted, is week 11, when we go to play Dallas, Sydney Jones will be our starting cornerback. I think the week before the bye week, depending on what the score is, depending on what the score is, if it's a blowout, if I think personally, if we're blowing out, I think we, I think we put a 49ers, maybe the Broncos before, but I think if we're blowing them out, Sidney Jones will come in and get some reps. I, I, from what I've seen, reports I've seen. He's running. He's doing a couple drills. He always travels with the team, which I think is awesome because it kind of gets him kind of a game presence. Um, and I think the kid's just going to be a stud. I think he's going to be a stud. I know Spunky is going to disagree with me on this because he doesn't think he should play. But, you know, I, I agree with you in the sense with injury. But like his teammate Kevin King said, he's not sitting out this year. I'm sorry. If doctors clear him and he can play, that kid's going to play. I'm sure he is just chomping at the bit to play football. And I think when he does come back, yeah, I'm thinking, you know, week 11, he could end up, maybe he gets burnt once or twice. But after, you know, after a couple things, he's going to click. He is going to absolutely click. And I am so excited for that. My dad got his Sidney Jones jersey the other day. It's going to be awesome. Um... I'm just really excited. I am so... Since the schedule came out, like I said, Dallas, two Dallas games are what's very important to me. And then this game tomorrow. Philadelphia, it's time to go and make a statement. And as Darius has said before, as Spunky has said before, as Philly 500 has said, let's see. We've conquered Kirk Cousins who always was a thorn. We conquered uh, Philip Rivers, once again, another thorn. And we conquered Larry Fitzgerald, who I think we did incredible on. So I think the true test tomorrow is beating that team without Lane Johnson. Because Carson historically does not have a good record without him. So I'm interested to see that. Final prediction, 27-24 Philadelphia. Let's go get the win tomorrow. This is Dan Radizek. Let's fly.